Hello everyone. Once again, this is Dare to Speak. Again, another scary story. A true one. And I'm, like I said before, I'm gonna be keep. I'm gonna keep making more scary stories for the month of October with Halloween coming up and all that. I've talked about this before um, in the very beginning of of my YouTube channel when I first started a year ago. And um, I'm gonna mention it again because uh, there was someone who requested um, a few things for me to talk about. One was on Santeria, and the other one was about the Incubus, which is associated with night terrors um, and stuff like that. So, um, here we go. This is the Incubus. And the female version of it, which is the Succubus. Basically, the Incubus is supposed to be a male demon according to popular um, folklore. And the uh, succubus is supposed to be a female version of it. They prey upon sleeping victims and then they um, have sex with them. The incubus will impregnate the woman and she'll give birth to a, a half-breed. And of course, uh, the female version of it, the succubus, would seduce the men, have sex with them, and so she can give birth to a half breed or whatever that kind of thing. In reality, they they are part of the um, fairy world, the um, goblins and elves. They're, like I said, there's different species. I mean, the list goes on and on, you know. Uh, Bogies, Bogarts, Leprechauns, uh, Wood Sprites, Goblins, Hobgoblins, Elves, and you know, Dopalanders. I mean, the list goes on and on. There's different species of it. Um, so these really are no different. And they usually are associated with sleep paralysis. And uh, sleep paralysis is... Um, when you can't move, when you feel that someone's in the room, you're paralyzed, but you know you're awake. And then you st you have this feeling that you're being watched, something standing, is standing next to your bed, and then you do finally do see it, and then you're terrified, and you feel you're, you're, you're just really gonna die. Like you're just about to die, that's it for you. And then some people, they pray, uh, they they use prayers just to get themselves out of it which usually works if you control your fear. I mean, whatever your method is, whether you're praying to Jesus or you're praying to uh, Saint Michael, the Archangel Gabriel, or or say, God help me, and, or say the Lord's Prayer. I mean, whatever whatever works. If it works for you, you I mean, which is basically a power of suggestion. That's all it is, it's a placebo effect. Because your mind conditioned, your mind mind conditioned to believe that it's going to be effective. So, and because of that, it is effective. Not because something came and rescued you, but because of your belief towards it, and you and your belief, your overwhelming faith causes an aura of protection, and it wards off the evil intruders of these creatures. Now. It's only ineffective if you cannot control your fear. And 
um, it takes practice, believe me. It's no joke. Anybody who ever suffered from sleep paralysis, who suffered absolute terror of seeing creatures that you, that you know that are not natural and stuff like that in there, that are just downright evil, believe me, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It is no joke. It's no picnic. It's no, there's nothing, there's nothing good about it. And of course, I can understand that you can't control your fear at first, but again, you have to. If you want these things to stop, you have to control your fear. It's a bitch and a half to pull off at first when you're not used to it. I understand that. But if you keep practicing in your whatever you and you actually stand up for yourself, which is no different than standing up against a bully. What do bullies do? They fuck with people that are that they, they know cannot be, uh, they don't have the courage to fight back. So it's really no different than that, except it's a lot more horrifying. It's more intense. That's the only fucked up thing about it. Uh, now, um, hopefully this, this answers your question. Now I'm going to talk about, um, from another request of Santeria. Before I get started on that, I just need you to read this, which is very important. I came across this on Google, and it makes a lot of sense. And when it comes to sleep paralysis, this is also very, very truthful. <clears throat> okay, um, as far as Sorry. As far as Santeria, um, there's not much that I know about it other than the fact that it's um, related to voodoo. And um, this is like an Hispanic version of voodoo. It's basically, you know, some kind of witchcraft. But they use saints. Um, I. My grandmother was kind of into that. She would use um, eggs, and you know, you know, to, you know, like I said, I think I mentioned it before in one in one video. Uh, if someone if someone is possessed or someone's been bothered by an evil spirit, you use an egg and they and they pray whatever prayer they do, uh, even with some kind of like Roman Catholic type of thing, because they usually they usually use a lot of that like the rosaries and they would put saints, uh, not just Jesus, but um, the Virgin Mary, they will have St. Peter, St. Uh, Christopher, St. you know, this, you know, the, you know, the, that, that kind of thing with their altar. They give, you know, they try to channel up their energy in order for, for to make their, uh, their rituals work. Now, Reputation wise, it's, it's usually white magic based, so they don't really harm people. But there's also people that use it for their own sinister purposes. People that are like, um, you could say unbalanced. And the perfect way of explaining it would be, um, From what I heard, I don't know if I still have um, the recording. Otherwise, I would, I would try to, uh, I could try to show you an example of that. But the thing, the thing about it is, this woman says, you know, there's people that would, that would uh, use it for their own sinister and their own selfish type of uh, purposes. 
and they can use it to put curse a curse on someone or a hex and you know, they will just to get back at somebody and they usually pray to a particular type of god um I, I'm not, I forgot the name of the actual god that they um, uh, worship, but these so-called entities or whatever that they actually uh, try to make contact with, I just don't like the idea that they actually give permission for these entities to possess their body. Aside from, you know, the rum that they use and, they, and then they just spit it out when they do their um, voodoo type Santeria stuff and sacrificing chickens, you know, drawing out the blood if they want to curse somebody. Um, even if even if someone were to try to curse somebody that was evil, you know, like a corrupted politician or, or whatever, or um, a crooked cop or whatever, the, or whatever the case may be, they cut off the head of the chicken and they, and they are, and then they, or slit the throat and they uh, have the blood go on the, on the photograph of the person they want to curse and when they do that and they say whatever uh, whatever bad thing is supposed to happen to them and they channel up their energy to make the and of course the blood of the chicken which has DNA you know all this kind of stuff that's how they uh, curse somebody and if, when they do that that's how, the, how that's how they make it work uh, and of course but what I don't like about it, I mean, yeah, I can understand how they want to get revenge on certain people that uh, that are bad, or you know, it's, it's, of course it's not good if they do that to somebody that, that is actually innocent. But the thing about it is, I'm not really too crazy about Santeria or any kind of voodoo kind of stuff. Anything that has to do with, because um, there's people in my in my father's side of the family that was into that, you know, his either his grandfather or his some one of his uncles or great uncles or aunts or whatever whoever was into it was you know into the santeria thing and he would tell me a lot about it we call them brujos a brujo a male witch and bruja of course means a witch a female and and he's from um veracruz mexico and he has relatives, you know, from there, he, he grew up as a, you know, on a farm and that kind of thing. Anyways, the idea of them possessing the person's body, you know, in order for to make some kind of a, cause some kind of an effect. I mean, to me, that's, that's, uh, it's too unnerving and, and it's also very dangerous. I don't, I don't really like the idea of that. That's why I'm not really too crazy for that type of uh, that type of thing. I never was crazy for it to begin with. Uh, I was more into Kabbalah, the Jewish Kabbalah. I was into that for a while, and I still know some stuff. I mean, not a whole lot, but I learned some kind of ritual magic. Um, and I got help from someone, and I started practicing. But I'm more into the psychological. And psychic defense rather than you know doing spells with working with different ingredients and and I don't know all that all that type of strange stuff if it's not too strange if it's more like the basic ritual magic thing that's that, that I always do that you know with image candles um, I think I made uh, a video where I, should, I don't know if anybody even paid attention to it but um I'll just show real quick hand sorry about that um what I would use um, this is like another version of the ritual magic thing. This is called a black image candle. And this one's a female. And this is used in ritual to um, remove negativity from somebody or to remove evil. If you're bothered by evil spirits, you just light this up. And, you know, they have a male and a female. 
image candle. They have it in different colors. They have it in white, they have it in red, and gray, and you know, that kind of stuff for different types of purposes. This is to remove, and also for people that are, do, that are doing um, uh, sinister type rituals, this is also used to, uh, to curse somebody, to place negativity on someone too. Or if you want, you know, for people that are into all that evil shit. But um, it could also be used to even bind somebody from harming somebody else supernaturally. If there was a witch that did something to, uh, to someone, you could use that and then have a photograph and use some kind of essential oil that you just put on the candle and um, you, there's some, um, something you recite and stuff like that and you were supposed to bind that person. There's a lot to explain. Um, maybe anybody who wants to make a request on the actual incantation on how to... to uh, bind somebody from harming you or to remove negativity anybody who's been um, bothered by evil spirits and you're at that point that you don't know what you feel what the hell you need to do you don't know what to do if there's anybody out there who uh, wants to know just let me know and i'll just give the the whole um, incantation and and, the, and all the do's you need to do and, and stuff like that uh because it worked for me when i when i did it um, a long time ago, I used to read, um, hopefully, hopefully there's enough light, um, this, it's an interesting book, I think it's a very interesting book, um, it shows all these rituals and all these sigils, and, um, you know, things like this ceremonial stuff and and they talk about the different types of spirits you get and uh sigils which is like symbols every particular spirit both good and evil um has symbols of course there's, there's no sigils for any kind of evil evil spirits in this book it's just all good um for those of you who actually believe in this stuff you know there's people that don't believe in it so but uh whatever but I found it interesting, and um, this this kind of thing does work if you do know what you're doing. And uh, I never tried it really. I'm not. I don't have enough knowledge to uh, summon a spirit, so I never really bothered with that. I did do a lot of this though. This is a very very good book to read, and uh, I learned a lot from it. Um, it's interesting like crazy. It shows a lot of, uh, this one was actually published in 1939. And, uh, they talk about the legends and they talk about certain type of, uh, for those of you who believe in angels, um, there's an angel named Urian, which is um, an angel that's invoked uh, against sorcery and sudden death. You'll find it in page 140. They actually they have the, the actual incantations for that. There's an angel named uh, Urian, and um, he's summoned, and then he'll his essence will protect. The person who does the who recites this actual incantation here, and then and of course it ends with Amen. Um, del uh, deliver deliver me from all sorcery, from all reverses, from poverty, from wicked men, from you know whatever. It goes on and on that kind of thing. It's pretty it's pretty uh lengthy, but uh. It's interesting. I was into that for a while. But right now I'm just more into the whole psychological part of it. And something else that I do um, that protects me. But I can't really say what it is. But it's very, very effective. And um, 
One person says, "Why don't you just say the incant? Why don't you just say the incantation of what you use to protect yourself? Because there could be somebody out there that needs help." It's not that I don't want to say it. It's just that it's a, a very powerful incantation that really helps to ward off evil. But um, it's basically for people who don't really believe in God or the or the or Satan. Um, I wish I could tell you exactly what it is as far as the diabolical evil what's, that's really um, tormenting humanity. I wish I could tell you that, but I, 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 in, a, in a sense, I really can't. Um, there's there's reasons why, and you know, I can't get into that. Um, but whatever your your faith is, I mean, if you, I mean, like I said, it's a, it's a placebo effect. The mind believes what it chooses to believe. Um, if there's anything you want me to cover or talk about, I mean, any questions or, uh, like I said before, questions or comments, you know what to do. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, this is Dare to Speak. And to all of you, Take care.